In today's tutorial, I'll be teaching you the most efficient and fastest way of loading data using the PyTorch framework. There are numerous and several ways of loading data, but in today's video, the method I'm going to be teaching you is the most fastest and efficient method ever. This is going to save you a ton of time. So if you are ready, let's get right into this tutorial where we learn how to load data efficiently using the PyTorch framework. Guys, so continue by installing the libraries we need for this particular project. So um, I'm using PyCharm and I'll just open my terminal and straightforward I'll install all the libraries I need. So the first library we need is Touch Vision. So to install it in Python, just write pip install Touch Vision. You hit enter on this and this will go ahead and install it for you. I've already installed this so you can see my requirements are already satisfied. We'll do the same thing for installing OPCV. If you don't have it, this will go ahead and install it for you. In my case, I've installed it already. The last package we install here will be matplotlib in order to visualize some of our images. So I'll just type the same thing, pip install matplotlib. So this will go ahead and do the same thing for you. In my case, I've installed them already. So we'll start off by importing this library. So we'll say from touch vision, but data set, we are going to import the image folder. Okay, so we'll be using this image folder to read in our images. Okay, and the next library we can import is OPCV. Now, go ahead and import Matplotlib as well. All right, guys, so we'll be using these three libraries to complete this particular tutorial. In case we need any additional libraries, I will import them as we go along. So the next thing we'll do right here is to teach you the folder structure you need in order to use this particular PyTorch class. So this is the image folder class from Touch Vision, and in order to use it, your folder must be structured in a certain way. So right here on my desktop, you can see I have some images here, and first I have a folder called Cat Dog Data. When I open it, then I have a subfolder cats and dogs. So in the dog folder, I have some images here. So about 100 images of dog. You can see the total number is 100. Then the same thing in the cats folder, I have 100 images as well. So that's how it works. When you have extra classes, you can add them here. Let's say you have another set of images of cows. You can add them. That means you have three classes. But in our case, we are having only two classes. This is how your folder must be structured in order to use it. You first have a general folder. Then inside the general folder, you have subfolders containing your classes. So if you have the data structured like this, you can go ahead and use the image folder class in PyTorch to load your data efficiently using the PyTorch framework. Okay, so to load your data, you just have to use one line of code. So we say data, and this will be equal to the image folder. And in here, you have to specify the path to your data. Declare a variable called data path, and over here, I'll just go and copy the path to my data set. So it's on desktop and right here. And you know, I patch them right here. I'll just paste it here. So this is the path to my data. So over here in the image folder, you just have to give it the data path, and you can give it transform, which I will talk about later in the video. But for now, let's assess some of the methods you will get using this particular image folder class. So let's say you want to get the number of classes in your data set. You can just type maybe classes is equal to data dot classes and this will give you the number of classes you have and label your classes for you so you can see this saves you a ton of time from writing a manual python code to loading your images generate your labels and append them into a list and so on whatever method you use this method is very fast because you can just get the classes and i'll just print them right here so let me go ahead and run this and let's see what we get so right here you can see we have a list and this list contains our classes cats and dog just as we have seen in our folder so you can see cats and dog so this is very straightforward and this is easy to do we have other attributes you can also access let's say you want to know the extensions the image extensions you can also access them here so you can store this in extensions and this will be able to data the extensions this will give you the extensions you have in your data or the extensions of your images so, so 
jpg yeah, jpeg and so on so let's just print extensions and i'll run it once again and we are going to see the extensions so you can see these are the various extensions we have in our data set we have jpg we have jpeg png ppm and so on so in case for your particular model you want to build you don't need other extensions you only need jpeg you can extract this and take only the images having this particular jpeg extension another method you can access right here will be the class index let's see you want to know either zero is associated to cats or one is associated to dog and so on you can actually use the class index method together so we can just say class index and this is equal to data that's class to index so let's print class index and see right here you can see we have cats so all the images which are associated with cats are having the index of zero and dogs are having the index of one so this is how simple it is for you to do your class index so imagine you have many classes let's say you have dog cow sheep, and so many classes by just writing this line of code you know all these classes and you know they are associated labels this is very easy and this saves you ton of time from writing your custom python script to do all of this for you kudos to python they are doing an amazing job okay so let's say now you want to grab some images how do you do it okay so to grab some images or to grab some samples or get all your images you can just save that in samples and this is equal to data.samples so this will return all your images for you and i'm going to print this right here and let's see so you can see this is the number of images we have and this returns a tuple so you will see the directory the image directory and the label that is associated to that image so these are images of cats here and they are associated with zero when you scroll down to that of the images of dogs you can see they have their label so this returns us with tuple and this tuple consists of the images and their corresponding label or class index and then we also have one which works similar to the samples and this one is images so let's say img is equal to data dot images this also returns you the images and their labels as well so let's print it and see what it returns right here you can see it returns you the same thing you have your images and their corresponding labels so i think they are doing the same kind of thing but this returns you a big list a giant list containing these tuples so that's the difference between the samples data dot samples and the images okay so now let's grab one image and show it let's say we want to visualize one of the images before we proceed we can do that simply by uh, taking it from either the samples or the images so let's say we want to take an image so i'll write image here is equal to sample and since this returns as a list we can take the first index which corresponds to the first image so i'll even go ahead and print this image here and this is going to return as the image and its particular label so let's run this and see so over here we are having the first image which is an image of a cat and its corresponding level which is zero but now i want to grab the image and show it so we need to extract the image and leave the label so for that we can add another square bracket here and add zero which is the first item in that particular tuple and after grabbing this image you can go ahead and show it with opcv so i can say my image and over here i'll specify that i'm reading the image so we can show this by doing plt dot i am sure you can show this with opcv as well but i'm just using my plot to show it I want to show my image and we'll do plt dot show and that is it so if i run this we will see the image which is the first image of the cat right here so this is the first image in the cat folder in case you want to uh, show another one you can take the second image right here and also visualize it you can see this is the second image so you can run a for loop to show some number of images or to do a subplot to see some number of images if you want to do so so these are all the attributes you can explore all the important attributes you need but where this really shines is that um, if you want to train your custom model then we don't need all of these attributes what we need is the data loader class in python where we can pass in this data and then we can get our targets and the label to train our own 
machine learning model. So for that, you have to import that from PyTorch. So we we'll say from touch dot utility or the util which is from the utility class dot data. We want to import. Okay. So right here, I can just say my data loader is equal to data loader class, and in here we can pass in our data. We can pass in the batch size. So with this batch size, we can make it like four. We can shuffle this image so that the, it will come randomly. So you can specify shuffle it through, and that's it. So you can see we just read these images using the image folder class, and right here we are passing it through our data loader. So this saves you a ton of time than doing your personal pre-processing steps and all so ever. And finally, what I want to teach you is that if you want to apply some transformation to these images, it's also easy set them down. You can just indicate your transformation here. So you can say transform is equal to let's say data trans. And over here we can define our data transformation pipeline here. So for that, we need to import that for touch vision. So from touch vision dot transforms, we want to import transforms then what we'll do is that we can say our data trans is equal to transforms dot compose and over here you can list some transformations you want to apply to this particular image so third vision have numerous transformation you can apply to your data so for instance if you want to resize we can just do transforms dot resize and over here it takes a tuple of the size you want to give it so let's say you want to resize all the images to 200 by 200 that means 200 in width and 200 in height you can just apply it here and one thing that pytorch i always accept is to convert your data to pytorch tensor so you can also apply that transformation transforms dot tensor and that's it so this will go ahead and apply all these transformations to your data so right after loading the data or your images, it will go ahead and apply all these transformations and you can see this is very easy. So this is what I want to teach you in this particular tutorial. You have all these methods to assess about your data and also you can pass your data straight up into the data loader class and then continue with your training process. So the most important thing which you will do is this particular three line of code where you define the part to your data you load your data and then you apply some transformations to your data but in case you want to access some of these methods here to know more information about your data this is also very easy which we've gone through earlier in the tutorial so guys if you love this tutorial if you love python tutorial kindly give me thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel share my tutorial so that we build a very vibrant learning community together Thanks for watching and as usual, I'll see you in the next tutorial.